My name is David Kibokalomo. I'm a fine art artist. And I've last 30 years I've basically focused on the modern batik technique. I'm born in Uganda, left when I was 14 during Idi Amin's timeline, and moved to Canada in the West. Traditional batik is the old batik technique that was used in Java. It's been around for probably thousands of years, but it came to East Africa in the 50s and spread all over Africa, South Africa, East Africa. So the traditional batik is the old style of having cracks and all those kind of uh, mosaic in a batik. You dip in the dye and it's, it gives you that traditional effect which has a spider kind of crack in it. Modern batik is a, a component that we added on the traditional batik. Modern batik to me happened in Nairobi when I was there after leaving Uganda. And it was my late brother Henry Rumu who actually made a break to modern batik because most of us could not do portraits or very realistic faces. Henry was the first person to actually use wax dyes on fabric and it looked like a painting. So I was very lucky to be around at that time and saw him make the breakthrough. And when I moved to Toronto, I started doing the modern batik technique, which is basically unique in its application from the traditional batik. I've been doing batik for the last 35 years because I started pretty young uh, learning how to do batik. It's a technique that I've added on a lot of components. If you look at the beginners, intermediate, the advanced, the masters, these are different techniques within the modern batik application. This is a sketchbook or a sketch pad. You basically need this to design any of your patterns of your choice. And after putting a pattern on a piece of paper, you can use a marker just to trace it out and put it on a fabric. This is cotton. It's North America, mostly in the West, they call it muslin. It's a cotton, raw cotton will do well with the toning technique. Uh, definitely we have dialons. Um, as you can see, this is a company that has changed from tin dialon to bag dialon. So you can get these anywhere. You can go on the website, you can always find where they are. These are Prussians as well. Um, they give you much more bright colors, but they all mix well together. And then you have brushes. These are straw brushes. Straw brushes work very well when you dip them in wax. The hot wax does not burn them like these other sable brushes for oil painting or acrylic. So with wax and dyes, we usually use uh, straw brushes. Uh, basically, you need a cup of water to mix the dyes. You also need these plastic pallets or plastic plates. You can get these in the supermarket. So when you put on dyes, it doesn't go through. And you have also a pen and ink. This can come off, as you can see, and you can put it back. These are basically calligraphy pens, which come to do some details towards the end. And of course, you need a blow dryer, because if it rains or, or you want to uh, you can't dry the work outside, the blow dryer comes in very handy. And lastly, we have the rice cooker. Now, one of the things that we switched from traditional batik where they have to steam the wax, which is candle wax or paraffin wax, uh, the rice cooker regulates the power so you don't get smoke in any way. So it's just like you wouldn't smell anything. So it's very safe to use so that you don't get any pollution from uh, paraffin wax when it's overheated, it gives off smoke. So this is just perfect. You can get it from any supermarket, basically anywhere in the world. My name is David Kibuka. I am a modern batik art instructor. Uh, we've been doing portraits, landscapes, and other subject matter in modern batik, but we're now instead focusing on textile. Textile is becoming very key today. Uh, a lot of, um, we wear fabrics most of the time. This design here, our pattern, was done by a uh, 16 years old youth. And you can see the drums he did in yellow, how he arranged them. Pretty, pretty neat, isn't it? Then we move to more of the coffee beans. You can see, these are printed on silk. By the way, but you can print it on cotton, you can print it on linen, anything. These are coffee, African coffee beans done in this kind of technique. In the modern boutique fragmentation technique again. And you can see the orange colors 
uh, or, uh, orange, which are warm colors, that's what um, I chose for this kind of composition. And we move to the African masks. Uh, let, me just, let me just do this a little bit. Now, I think you can see that. These are African masks and drowned. The background is black. Uh, they are in warm colors. Though I can change the back, back, background anytime I wish. And we move again here to a more of a contemporary pattern, but it's still an African pattern. And it has coffee beans. I change the colors to blue and browns and purples just to give it that little flavor, which is uh, different from the warm colors. And here we have again the masks that I was talking about that you can actually do it in the, uh, with a white background and you can change a lot of these patterns. Now we know that in Africa, especially South Africa, West, uh, East Africa and Central Africa, we do have a lot of patterns which are different from West Africa. But again, all these are African patterns in a nutshell. Uh, I'm gonna be teaching this very, very soon online and the classes will be offered where you can log and actually do so many of these classes from uh, beginners to intermediate to advanced and then the master's class. Uh, again, my name is David Booker and you can log on at www.modernbatikartworkshops.com. Thank you very much.